So, today in my chat, we are doing some predictions. On Thursday morning, Wizards is doing Wizards Presents. You can't look see it here, but there you go. So, Wizards Presents 2022. This is basically Wizards of the Coast just going out and promoting and doing a whole lot of like check out some details and some interesting stuff about what we're going to be releasing quote unquote soon. I have a lot of predictions that I think is going to be hinted at or even just outright told to us. So we're gonna go through those predictions today. Now I have a couple predictions and I'm gonna save my biggest prediction for last because there's something that I, I saw mentioned once and I was like, that is fucking genius. And it would be so dumb if they don't do this. And I want to talk about that, but I'm going to talk about that last. So first things first, they will reveal something about the next edition of D&D. When I say something, I don't mean just like fucking like just like one little tiny thing. I think they're going to reveal something something at least decently major like at least what it's going to be called is it going to be called 5.5 is it going to be called 6 is it going to be called advanced fifth is it going to be called just dungeons and dragons not even addition and then like the community is going to give it a name of itself like i don't know but i think they're going to either reveal the name of the next edition or something major about its design now that last one they may not do for fear that other people might start implementing it into regular 5th edition as is, but they also already do a lot of um, playtesting, like public playtesting with people. It's called Unearth Arcana, which is, for those who don't know, every couple of months uh, the, wiz the team at Wizards of the Coast will release what's called an Unearth Arcana. It's just a Google document with a bunch of like ideas for Dungeons and Dragons. Like there's new subclasses, there's classes, there's races, there's uh, new spells, all kinds of stuff. They come out in these Unearthed Arcana and they explicitly say, these are not official. These are not brand, these are not new rules. These are not meant to be implemented. They are simply, we think these are really cool ideas, but we want you guys to try them. And then in a couple weeks time or a month's time, report back to us with a survey. And then a lot of times, those ideas in those unearthed arcanas will then make it to official books because again all we know right now is that the next edition is coming in 2024 for the 50th anniversary and fuck all else about it we don't know how it's going to run we don't know what it's called we don't know anything about it so they're going to have to reveal something about it considering it's coming in two years not even two years we're almost done 2022 so it's almost going to be like one year they're going to have to reveal something about it and they may and slash or Something major about its design, just how it's going to run, how it's going to function, what the, how it's going to differ than 5th edition currently. They also said it would be backwards compatible, which I sincerely hope so, because a lot of people love 5th edition, and Wizards has now been running 5th edition for so many years, and they've released so many books, and so many rules, and stories, and just... So much shit around 5th edition that to suddenly make a new edition that throws all of that away would be such a fucking gun to the head. The next thing I think they're, I, they're going to do, either Planescape and or Dark Sun. For those who don't know, Planescape and Dark Sun were two um, worlds or, you know, campaign settings way back in the TSR days. Let's let's talk about Dritz for a second. They've made a big deal here on the website. I mean, Dritz is on the front page here. And they've made a big deal talking about how it's going to be Dritz's 35th anniversary. So Dritz Warden is also gearing up to celebrate his 35th anniversary and those plans alongside a look at what else fans can expect in this year and beyond. I think one of two things is going to happen for Dritz. Either there is going to be a special edition of one or more of the books and or a new book announcement for sometime next year. I don't think they would do a new book announcement for this year. I think that would be way too short of notice for a book announcement. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time, but typically not something that usually happens. A lot of book announcements happen and then like release date is way far into the future for publishing and printing and so on and so forth. However, a special edition, I think that could be easily done this year. 
because they already have all the novels. They already have all the stories. So I think making a new, like a hardcover book, or if they just want to absolutely be crazy, just make a, a one a one of all, like every Dritz de Warden story in one massive hardcover tome. I think they likely more do like a box set like that. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but there's that that really, really cool looking, but stupid expensive uh, Wheel of Time special edition where like the back of the books all have like the logo of the Wheel of Time and they all connect. But of course there's like fucking, I don't know how many books there is from Wheel of Time. I think there's nine of them or something. So it sits like super long, but it looks awesome because the logo connects between all of them. So I think they might do something like that, but that's, uh, that's my predictions for Dritz. They will reveal more cards from the Warhammer decks. They haven't revealed much about them, but they have revealed a f like three cards, maybe four total. Oh yeah, so here's one, Abaddon the Despoiler. So there's his card there. This is a completely brand new card. This is not a reprint. This is not a name change for something entirely new. This is completely brand new. Abaddon the Despoiler, legendary creature, Astartes Warrior. They will reveal more cards from the Warhammer decks because we literally have very little knowledge about them. They will tell us something about the Lord of the Rings crossover. The right around now is like the best time to tell us about something because we've known for a long while. Like Wizards has been talking constantly for some kind of universes beyond crossover, just like they're doing with the Warhammer decks. We don't know what it's going to be though. And right now with uh, well, like with the new show coming out on Amazon next month in September, like right now is the perfect time to tell us something about what's going to be happening with the Lord of the Rings crossover because you've already got hype going on for the Prime show. All right, second last thing. Reveal the name of the set after Brothers War. For the magic year coming up, we have Dominary United coming out on September 9th. We have the Brothers War then coming out November 18th. These ones, we don't know anything else about except for these code names. We only have the like rough quarters, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Beyond that, don't know anything. And then the last thing. This is the big thing. This is the prediction that I want to be, I want this prediction to happen the most. This is the big one that I've heard one person talk about. And I thought that is a brilliant prediction. And I am on full board with this. Wizards of the Coast comes out with a brand new virtual tabletop. This would be the greatest fucking thing ever if done right. 100%. A lot of you who play Dungeons and Dragons probably know about D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond has been a website for years that offered basically every single thing you could get physical copies of for Dungeons and Dragons. You could buy every detail about these books on D&D Beyond. And a lot of people for the longest time thought D&D Beyond was owned and operated by Wizards of the Coast, but it wasn't until recently. But for the longest time, they have been two separate products, two separate companies revolved around the same game. Wizards of the Coast comes out with the paper books and all the cool stuff, and then D&D Beyond basically scans everything from the books and puts it on their website, available digitally with Wizards of the Coast permission, and sells it to you there. And a lot of people were constantly angry that they had to buy their books and then they had to buy them again for the digital versions online. But of course, because it wasn't the same company. So of course you had to do that. But then a long, long time after this, you know, continues on going, D&D Beyond starts growing and experimenting with other things. They come out with a combat tracker. It's still in, still in rough stages, but it works, it's fine. And then they come out with character sheets. And then they make it so that you can build your characters and incorporate your class, your subclass, magic items, race, uh, items, a uh, regular armor, like all this kinds of stuff that you could buy on D&D Beyond. You could then incorporate that all onto your character sheet. And you could also then access this character sheet 
on the computer or even on a tablet. If any of you watch Critical Role, you know this because they play with virtual character sheets on their tablets. They're using D&D Beyond character sheets and they have been since campaign two. They, they don't use pen and paper anymore. They use D&D Beyond. Granted, it's also because they're a sponsorship, but it also just really works. I have a player who uses D&D Beyond for their character sheet all the time. And on top of that chat, you can also purchase virtual dice on D&D Beyond and you can roll virtual dice on D&D Beyond. Everything is there for a virtual tabletop on D&D Beyond. The one thing that's missing is the one thing that companies like Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds have that D&D Beyond doesn't, and that's a battle map. Roll20 has everything Virtual Tabletop can offer, except they have a battle map, and they have a way to make battle maps. Fantasy Grounds has everything D&D Beyond can offer and what Roll20 can offer, except they have a battle map. That is the one thing missing from D&D Beyond not being a Virtual Tabletop. And now Wizards of the Coast has purchased D&D Beyond. They went out and they bought the whole damn company and they own it now. I would not be surprised is if the next coming releases for books, we start seeing codes on the back of the books that you could then implement into D&D Beyond and you no longer have to buy the book physically and digitally. You can now buy it once in person and then put that code into D&D Beyond and you get the book virtually. And now, especially now, with the COVID pandemic, basically I know it's winding down and in, in a lot of places it's basically non-existent anymore. So it's a little late for this to come out like at the peak of its at its need. But nonetheless, there is still a lot of D&D games nowadays that are being played virtually and long distance because everyone was shut inside, everyone was shut indoors. A lot of people couldn't play their games in person anymore, so they moved their games to virtual. All these people moved indoors and either played their same campaign and their same games, but now online, or they found groups overseas and have been playing online through Discord and Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds with people they could never otherwise play with in person. With Wizards buying D&D Beyond, they have absolutely everything they need to come out with their own version of a virtual tabletop. They're only missing one thing, and it's a battle map. That is the only thing D&D Beyond is missing, and I have no doubt that they have to be working on that. They can't come out with character sheets and dice and everything that you need to make a character and the ability to make magic items, B build your own class, build your own race, build your own subclass, build all this stuff for Dungeon Masters, make all this stuff for players and not have a way to then finally connect all of this. Because you can do all of this, but you, all, you get all of this, but then you come to the stopping point where suddenly what happens when you now need to play the game? You have to go to roll 20. You have to go to Fantasy Grounds. You have to go to Tabletop Simulator or you have to go to Buddy's Kitchen at the actual table. They, you can do everything you need to on D&D Beyond except for actually play the game. Whereas Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds lets you do everything and play the game. This is the massive thing that I'm I'm almost dead certain Wizards is, is working on this. And they're either going to announce it uh, on Thursday morning or they're going to say it's in progress or it's working or they're just going to absolutely slap their dicks on the table and say, by the way, it's live now. And just like, here's a link, sign up, boom, go for it. I will be happy if at least one of my predictions here is correct. I've, I've cast a fairly large net here, but this is the massive thing that I'm really, really hoping for. Here we Most go. I Let's see about our predictions. Finally, something about Lord of the Rings. On oh, fuck you. You'll right, see we're back. the entire Woo! That was the Baylor the ring or the Balrog. All the way to Mordor. It's fucking goddamn it. The borderless scene cards. Oh when brought together, yeah. These cards will form amazing, recognizable scenes from the books, like the climactic battle of Pelennor Fields outside of Gondor. This beautiful Woo! tableau is formed from 18 separate cards. Woo! On their own, they are glorious pieces of art, but put them together. You can see the entire story as if turning pages in the novel. This epic crossover will be a fully modern legal and sick. draftable booster set for you to play and collect. And today, we're going to introduce some of what's in store for us as we embark on an initiative that we call 1D&D. 
Growing this is about, up, I this must be about the new edition. Fantasy. We did a smart thing with fifth edition by listening to the fans. And what came out of that process was a system that is stable, that is well loved, that incorporates the best elements of earlier editions. Now that we have that, we are no longer in the position where we think of D&D as an edition. It's just D&D. This edition is a rule set that has worked for so many people. And so they're just going to so call it D&D now. It's not going to be six edition. Into the game. It's, it's just going to be D&D. It's for us to continue to cultivate and respect and, and love what it is you know, th that the world has told us is working for them. One D&D has three pillars, and uh, one is the rule set, which is built on the base of fifth edition, but updated. We're building upon the rules that have been Obviously, established. Obviously, nerd. The storytelling. They were never not going to make new books for us to buy. They're a company. And our rule system. They kind of have to. When we say building to. on top of fifth edition, what we mean is that um, all the adventures and supplements that have been released in the past 10 years will still be playable with the new evolution of D&D. Still backwards D &D compatible. Beyond, which what we want to do is actually just provide all the tools that the players need to play themselves in one space. Right now with the acquisition of D&D &D Beyond, we've already started to dip our toe into digital. And it's a fantastic partnership that we have going, but we can add more. Digital physical bundles is something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Is and this the virtual tabletop? It's part of our family. It's finally something we can do. Your content is available anywhere you want it. You have those physical books, but you've got a nice portable versions that you can access through your phone or through your tablet or through your other device. Then our future facing aspect of this is the D&D Digital, which will become a full play space for you to have experiences that are more immersive. Right now we're in early development of our I digital fucking experience. Called it. We can Woo! play a game, roll some dice, see the miniatures yes! moving around in a 3D play yes! space, um, but that's just the core of it. Oh, yes. We chose the Unreal Engine for several reasons. Reason number one, make it look dope. That's the first thing. I fucking called there, it, chat. I'm not limited by the digital technology. We might give you a pre-made campaign from us that has an exciting castle or keep with a dungeon inside of it, exciting NPCs, but then you're gonna be able to take this playset, take it apart and build your own. We're gonna have a really robust tool for you to be able to create your own dungeons. This is just the start of One D&D, &D, and we are relying on all of you to help us out and figure out that future together. One D&D, &D, I fucking call it. And now we're fucking frozen again. But that was right here. Wizards comes out with a brand new virtual tabletop, called it. Yes! 2023 marks the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Driss. All right. For all you Drist fans out there, 2023 is gonna be your year. Let's see There'll what we got going for Driss Sword in here. Celebrate the companions of the hall. And today, we're gonna talk about three. First up, every ebook and audiobook from R.A. Salvatore's The Legend of Driss series will be released with new 35th anniversary covers featuring stunning Called art from it. today's top fantasy artists. That's right. Look at that. Special edition of one or more books. Reimagined for the ultimate Drist collection. Knew it. Fucking Next, called fans it. fans will be able to get their hands Woo! on the Legend of Drist visual dictionary. In this compendium, Drist takes readers on a spectacular journey through the Forgotten Realms in never-before-seen detail. From the glaciers of Icewind Dale Is to that the teeming Does that technically count as a new book for my predictions as well? shadows of the Underdark. Fans will explore the lore and characters of the Legend of Drist series. It technically with this is a new book. Extraordinary guide that features an amazing cover from artist Jason Rainville and brand new artwork of Drist and the Companions. And finally, we have a brand new story in the Drist universe for the Never next mind. generation of fans. Bingo! We will bring a Drist family Woo! webcomic to Webtoon. This weekly comic series will follow Drist's and Caddy Bree's tween daughter Bree, who absconds with Drist's iconic sword Twinkle in order to prove that she can be just as heroic as her famous parents. The creator of the acclaimed webtoon series Suitor Armor, Purpa, has written the story with R.A. Salvatore's guidance. The series features art by fan favorite illustrator Ryan LeCount. Warhammer 40,000 has joined with Magic the Gathering, and you will now be able to play Commander within the universe of one of the most famous tabletop games ever created. We know there will this. Be four different decks available. We know this. Factions from the Imperium of Man. We the know this. Of chaos, this has all been revealed already. Necrons. Each deck will come with a soul ring themed around its faction. Okay, cool. These decks will be available in regular and collector editions. 
every card in the collector edition comes in the Is that all you're gonna show? beautiful surge foil treatment. Look for the Warhammer 40,000 Commander decks coming out later this year. Oh, and for all of you looking forward to the Warhammer 40,000 secret lair drops, we now have a release date. You'll be able to grab these amazing cards on October 17th. You didn't show any other additional fucking cards except for the Soul Ring. That's right. The what? series that has been around for over 60 years is Holy joining forces fuck. with Magic the Gathering. Doctor Who will come to Magic in immersive commander decks. There will be four decks in total. They will feature doctors, companions, four villains, additional Doctor Who decks, and more from across the show's 60-year history. But it's not just commander decks. If you really want to make your deck fantastic, you'll be able to get beautiful special treatments and their very own collector boosters. And you can bet Secret Lair will be in on the action as well. Whether heroic or villainous, in old Whovian or new, these decks are so full of references, you'd think they're bigger on the inside. I hope you're Holy as stoked as I am for these shit. upcoming collaborations. And stay tuned to what's coming next. Okay, well, uh... <laughs> Fuck. Strange. And now, for the first time ever, we're going to peel back the curtain on an entire year ahead of us. Let's give you a taste of all the major releases coming to Dungeons & Dragons in 2023. I feel like I can't even pick a favorite. Oh boy, all right. What's coming for D&D next year? We start the year with Keys from the Golden Vault, a D&D anthology with heists at the center of each tale. Next, Bigby Presents Glory of the Giants provides the definitive tome of giant gameplay in D&D. After that, the Fandelver campaign is a classic adventure that expands Lost Minds of Fandelver into a full campaign with many surprises in store. Later in the year, the Book of Many Things uses the legendary deck of many things to explore a host of new options for dungeon masters and players. And finally, we end the year with a return to Planescape. This campaign collection includes everything you need to explore Sigil and the multiverse beyond. Woo! That's another one of my predictions. Planescape or Dark Sun. Up next, Turns Magic out it was Gathering Planescape. Thought it would be Dark Sun, but apparently it's Planescape. And now it's time for the Magic main event. We're going to get a look at the full slate of main sets that will be coming out from the rest of this year through 2023. Woo! I wanted them just to reveal the name of the set after Brothers War. They're gonna tell us the name of every set? Holy There's shit! That's a whole lot of news That's to way more Jimmy, than I expected. Tell us about these exciting sets. All right, Dominaria has long theorized that it would be next in the Phyrexians' plans, but the heroes truly have no idea just how far the war has progressed. Tamiyo isn't the only planeswalker hidden among them that has Phyrexian oil coursing through their veins. Is it Johnny? I have a real bad feeling it's going to be a Johnny that's completed. Arc. All right, let's see and all those upcoming sets. Present. Hot on the heels of Dominaria United, the next chapter brothers of the Phyrexian War. arc will unfold as we travel back in time to follow the most famous brothers in the multiverse, Urza and Mishra in the Brothers War. In this set that straddles both the present and past of Dominaria, we'll get a closer look at the infamous conflict that caused the rift between these two artificers. And you know what that means? Plenty of artifacts. And we're not talking about spectacles and sunglasses. We're talking giant mechs and colossal war machines. <laughs> Can't say too much just yet, but one thing I will say is that the fate of the future might be rooted in the past. Up next in our storyline, our villains grow ever stronger in Phyrexia. All will be one. Oh For the first time boy. in over 10 years, we revisit the terrifying Ooh. and beautiful plain of New Phyrexia as Elish Norn inches ever closer in her plan to conquer the multiverse. Oh boy! Things look grim. Terror and oil oozes from every corner of the plain as we experience the fear and joy of becoming one. Horror fans, you won't be disappointed. Oh, And finally, fuck. March of the Machine, the dramatic conclusion of the Phyrexian arc. The entire multiverse rallies together for one epic climactic battle. But what will be left when the dust settles? Did we survive? We'll find out where we I stand really don't after know about that font. Arc in but March okay. of the Machine, the Aftermath. The very fabric of the multiverse has fundamentally changed, and Aftermath serves as an epilogue by tying up some loose ends and starting new beginnings. After the conclusion of the Phyrexian arc, Wilds of Eldraine returns us to the fan favorite Woo! plane. But in this set, we're taken away from the cities and castles and into Eldraine's wilds, where enchantments abound. Let's and go! And where you might even recognize inspiration from even more classic fairy tales. Fuck yeah! 
Love Eldraine. We close out 2023 by going on a thrilling adventure. We'll dive into the lost caverns of Ixalan. But things have changed. Yes, since we've come back to Ixalan! Mortal Sun disappeared. Woo! In this set, we're spelunking for buried treasure. And there just might be some dinosaurs. Yes! Woo! Hell yeah! Thanks so much for <laughs> Let's go, Oko! Oh, go. More elks! Uh, if they show me a Johnny as a completed planeswalker, I'm gonna fucking nut. A few last things players need to know about this latest Phyrexian threat. If you show me a Johnny completed, oh my god! Oh my god! If you show me a completed Johnny, I'm gonna nut. For Dominaria to finally become whole, I will stitch perfection into the flesh of this land. Fuck! Ah, motherfuckers! You fucks! They did it. They did it. Ah, oh, you bastards. Holy shit. Wow. What is Twitch chat saying right now? Oh my god. <laughs> You fucks. You assholes actually did it. Oh my god. Wow, they fucking what what they did to my boy! What they did to my son! My Johnny is a fucking Phyrexian! Alright, chat, well. Uh, in terms of my predictions, uh, I did fucking pretty spot on 